Good morrow, and this is Knots and Links, Chapter 3, Part 2 of N. <coughs> the last video cut off at the end, um, because my alarm went off, and I'm not going to do that again. But I think I left off at the first conjecture on page 48. And the first conjecture is that if two tame knots in R to the third have homeomorphic complements, then the knots have the same type. A knot is tame if it is equivalent to a polygonal knot. The following example shows that the corresponding conjecture for links is false. Example 2. 2. Example. Two equ inequivalent links with homeomorphic complements, J and K, in S to the third, J and K prime. So that one is squigglier. Notice that K prime is a trifoil, whereas K is trivial. Oh yeah, because it's just kind of like a loop. It's just looped back where that one actually crosses over. Yeah, very good. <sighs> Let us accept for now that these are inequivalent. This will be proved in the next section. I definitely accept right now that those are inequivalent. The n the j union k and j union k prime. I hope that's union. I know there's another one that's upside down. Must be an equivalent links, right? Uh, okay, sure. However, their complements say that in does s to the third just mean like like three dimensional space? Because that's okay. So uh, are homeomorphic. Their their complements are homeomorphic. For s uh, for space minus j is homeomorphic with the one uh, s the one of int deep two applying the twist homeomorphism h z w z z w where. S and D are suitably identified with subsets of the complex numbers carries K onto K prime by a homeomorphism of S minus J. It follows that S minus J union K and S minus J union K prime are homeomorphic. A similar argument works in R. What's R? Why is R? I think there was, we were talking about R before. I don't even know what R is. Did we ever talk about what R is? Or S? I feel like I missed that part. Okay, well. Although the complement of a knot or a link is usually difficult to describe or characterized topologically, one may derive less sensitive, more computable invariants from it. Any function f from topological spaces to, say, an algebraic category becomes a link or not invariant via the composite l or x equals r to the n minus l f of x or s to the n minus l. Sure, one immediately thinks of homology or cohomology. Bam! He is absolutely right. That was my first thought. Homology or... Well, I, I thought co-homology, -hom but... Uh, so, yeah, not, not the one that he named first, but... It's, I, I think that, that counts still. But these are quite useless, according to Alexander Duality. Oh, man. Ouch. Yeah, I guess, I guess I was wrong yet. Uh, yeah, it, 
So th uh, these are quite useless according to Alexander Duality. Good to know. I think there's an Alexander chain thing or something, or some kind of Alexander something or other later, but we'll get through. Oh yeah, not quite to Antoine's horned necklace, but um, we're getting there. Okay, three. Okay, this looks like it's doing a lot of the math part. The integral homology and cohomology groups of the complement of a link in R, R to the N or S to the N are independent of the particular embedding. Okay, it's lots of math stuff here. Very good. Oh god. On the other hand, the homotopy groups of the complement are often quite good invariants. The fundamental group of the complement, in particular, has been undoubtedly the most useful tool available to not theorists. Oh, okay. So the fundamental group of the complement, in particular, has been undoubtedly the most useful tool available to not theorists. Uh, I will endeavor to put that in my toolbox. The remainder of this chapter discusses some of its applications. Okay, great. Except for pathology, it applies only in co-dimension two. An easy general position argument shows that a PL, which is something linear, shit, link, okay, a PL link L to the K and S to the N has simply connected complement if N minus K is greater than or equal to three. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's the end of section three, the proposition of uh, this. It's, this is an audio book. Okay. Uh, audio book where you can look at my garden. There. Tell me if any spiders walk by. Okay, uh, so the uh, part four, exercise. Prove the remark just made. Um, I'm gonna say no, uh, as in, in the preface, uh, he clearly said, do all of the exercises you can. I definitely cannot do any of them, so I'm just going to say that's really cool. Um, the fact that the homotopy groups are of the complement are often quite good environments. That's good to know. I'll keep that. Um, I'm going to trust his judgment. Um, I don't need to prove it to myself, and I don't need to prove it to anyone else. I'm just going to take this on total faith that I have no idea what, he t what I'm talking about, and I have no idea what he's talking about. Um, but the fundamental group of the complement in particular has been undoubtedly the most useful tool available to not theorists, so I'm just going to go with it. And that's the end of section A of page 50.